has a human voice. A female voice too. In this vast and distant jungle. Ah! settlement anywhere close to this forest. So who is she? And, and how did she end up here in this state? No. I'm, I'm here on a very important mission and I needed to fully concentrate. So whoever you are, sorry, I, I, I can't help. Oh, wait, could this be a test? Could this be the ghost testing me to see how compassionate I can be? Or otherwise? My father said that it's a taboo to disclose whatever that happened inside this jungle during this type of mission and for that no one else except those who have made the journey before. So what? What could this be? What a prince encounters are made to deal with by the ghosts while in the jungle. Am I made to keep it to myself? So what if, what if testing me in this man is part of it? Ghosts of my ancestors. Please help me. Help me to take the right decision in this. Ghosts of my ancestors, if this is a mistake, please forgive me. Let her survive and be reunited with her family through my compassionate Please help. Young lady, I have no idea what manner of help you need to pull this through. Beyond these little things I've done for you already. Please regain consciousness and talk to me. I need to know things about you urgently. Things like who you are, your name, where you came from and how you ended up in this vast forest all alone and in the state I found you. I promise to do whatever I can to help you return to your land and reunite with your family. If you do not die in my care, please, with my princely honor, I vow it to you. Just survive.
to harm you. Okay. I've been trying to help you. I, I met you at this jungle two days ago. Okay. Let me introduce myself. My name is Prince Ajero of Icheku Kingdom. I came to this jungle to perform a royal ritual when I saw you unconscious. I've been trying to help you since then. Do you mind to tell me who you are? What happens to you? Why were you abandoned in, in this jungle? What's your name? Where, where are you from? Do you have a relatives around here? Can you can you remember anything? You can't. Okay. Let me get you water. Since he arrived here, all our questions to him has refused deafening silence for an answer. He completely ignored Njideka and I. Even Hejike the get man. So Njideka and I decided not to waste time but to rush to the palace where you were having a meeting with your majesty to fetch you physically so that you can see things for yourself. Ask him. Ask him what is up to perhaps he will tell you. I will do the next. Why are you like why are you fired turn on my, my compound? Eh? Ichu Nachese. The ghost instructed me to come to the compound of Ichie Dr. Omo Naudogo and do exactly what I just did. Okay, huh? This compound originally belonged to my late father, Ichie Doctor Omona Udog. Even at that, as the current owner of this house, I demand to know why the gods directed me to come and do this here without my permission, without me knowing. Ichie the gods did not tell me why they sent me to do what I did, and I cannot tell you what. They did not tell me. But I know one thing for sure. The gods are wise. The gods are wise. In our tradition, before a man in your office walks into a compound to fire a cannon like this, it is to announce the death of a daughter. But in this context, nothing of us ha uh, happened. Why? I have done exactly what the gods sent me to do. And to their abode, I return.
Why did you open that door? No. Let Talk to me now. Do you have a secret family that you can... Shut up and stop talking nonsense. Talking nonsense? Yes. And how, you. and how dare she? Really? Come. Is she talking nonsense by asking that person? Have you forgotten what happened at the palace yesterday? And now this? Do you think we're so daft to think that it is just coincidence? What manner of coincidence is that? Oh, no, no, no. Can you allow me to think? Allow me to think! No! Unacheze! This is not the time to think. It is time to talk. So, talk to us. Where are you hiding the sacred family you are hiding? Enough! Enough! Or have you lost your thinking abilities? Even if I have a secret wife somewhere, tell me, is it possible that you have a daughter for me that is older than this decade here? And she was born today? Yes, the canon of a mother that was fired in this compound today simply means that a daughter was born in this compound today and will soon make her first physical appearance on the soil of Ichiku. How then can such a little girl be my first daughter even if it is distantly possible under the circumstances? Oh, are you trying to tell me that um, another man was responsible for the pregnancy that gave birth to? God forbid! To fear what? Jideka is your biological daughter. She is. And I swear by the most malevolent spirit of Icheku land that no man, not even a half man, have ever laid in between my spread laps ever since you made love to me. Then what is going on? What am I going to do about her now? Because of my ancestors. Apart from the fact that I'm going to be rationing my food and water with her to ensure that I sustain both of us for my remaining six days in this forest. Handling her in her current memory an emotional condition is going to be extremely difficult for me. She has been moody in one moment and irritated in another since she regained consciousness. Someone in such state can be dangerous to my physical safety or to herself even. She can easily give up on hope and commit suicide out of frustration. What will I do if that happens? As a prince and heir to the throne of Ishiku Kingdom, there are two things that I'm forbidden from having physical contact with. One is a woman that is misrated and the other is a human cause. So, what if I do... What will I do if she decides to commit suicide or if her miserable flow starts while she is with me in this... of our ancestors. Ajero, what are you doing here? Father, please. I must take a chill pill and try not to be up on the hill. I'm going to explain everything. Explain what? Who is she? Father, that's what I just said. 
Well, the, the, I, I really don't know her. She's, she's the reason I aborted my mission. But Father, please, I, I have a reason for what happened. Okay, and I promise to explain everything to you. Go and call her Norma okay. right now. You do not know her? You put the dynasty of our forefathers at the risk of permanent extinction because of a young lady you just told me you know nothing about. You must be joking, isn't it? Then say something that sounds less like a joke of a hopeless drunk fool to me. Madness has never been associated with anyone in our language, so I cannot say you are mad. For the last time, what is going on? Who in the name of Dikoha is she? Young lady, you said you're going to be fine. You're going to kill me first. You have to kill me first. For the last time, what is going on, Ajero? Father, you need to calm down. I will tell you everything you need to know. Ezekiel! Your Majesty. Some of my chiefs and the chief priests. Tell them there is a minious emergency in the palace. Okay, Your Majesty. Meet me in my chamber. Norma. Yes, Your Highness. Take her to your room and give her a pad. She's misreading. The stage I saw her was on call for. I know I'm going for something important to say this thing. But at the same time, I cannot see a, a, a human that, that is not okay, and I would let her be like that. I had to do what I had to do. You taught me that. Oh. Um, my prince, uh, you should have been seen as a honorable if the maiden in question is from the Cheku kingdom. But in this situation, whether she lives or not, she has nothing to do with you, nor our kingdom, which means she is none of your business. I bet to disagree, Chiendo Koba. She's my business. You know why? Because she's human. She's in the same family as me. Will you shut up, my king, please? She belongs to no family that is even distantly ours. Please, calm down. Father. She belongs to the human race, Father. All of us are part of that family. Those are your exact words when I was growing up. Have you forgotten? Um, my prince, just like Ichi and Dokoba here rightly said, by the nature of your mission in the jungle, the type of honor and morality you talk about are not ideal at all. They are not because the situation was not ideal. You should, you should have just sent her away the moment you found out that she was with blood. So I was... vow to her by my princely honor, Ichiona Chiese, that I will never do such a thing to her. You will no longer be a prince because of your rascality. We destroy the dynasty of our forefathers. When I finally join my ancestors, this throne will be passed on to the family of. Oh, yeah. The throne will be passed on to no one else but Prince Adil. Wise one. Give me the royal dagger, my prince. The gods said I should return it to them for safekeeping. The gods promised to return it to you on the day they will choose 
for you to repeat your sojourn to the jungle of Obaji and our ancestors. Why is it? You mean that the gods are not angry with him because of this? Everything he did in the jungle, including his decision to abort the sojourn and return with the maiden, had the wise approval of the gods. Very wise approval. Then they returned the royal dagger to him when he was about leaving the Obaji tree. Is testimony to this. Uh, wise one. Please. The maiden. But who is she? I mean, where is she from? The gods have not said anything in that regard, so I do not know. Wise one. Not even what we should do about her. I mean, whether to allow her to stay put in the palace or not. Only the man who brought her to the palace and to the kingdom has the final say as regards anything concerning her. Prince Ajero and no one else. Hmm. Call Ha, Venus. Venus? Is that her name? The girls did not say. They only instructed that everyone should call her Venus. The girls are wise. I vowed something to her, the cheer on her cheese. And it stays like that till her memory is fully restored. Pony, you should have pressed further and added to Abigail removed from the powers. You should have even suggested them bringing the girl over here for us to help them take care of her. As friends of the powers and soon to be royal in law. You know, put fear in them by convincing them that if they leave the girl there, it could result in something no one would expect. Some kind of mistake that could result in the king or even the prince mistakenly having physical contact with her. Thereby dooming the dynasty. See, she's having issues with her memory and she's someone who could do anything at any moment and she's not to be blamed. I am saying this because I'm a medical doctor with almost three decade practice experience. I know what I'm talking about. My dear. <coughs> I stayed back after the meeting yeah. and I tried all I could to push this same argument you are making here now. Right. I convinced the Igwe totally, but when the prince was brought into the discourse, he ended it with an emphatic no. Three strange coincidences in three days in which the girls have completely confused everyone with their answers or silence to these important questions raised. Dad. Yes. Mom. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you both want to become royal in-laws. I want to become the wife of Prince Ajaro and the next queen of this kingdom. And I must confess, I am desperate about it right now. My dear, that's a wrong thing to say. It is the gods that choose and make kings. It is the gods that choose royal brides. Why are they dramatizing my own choice like this? Yes, I trust them. But I'm no longer comfortable with this whole drama. Neither your mother nor I is comfortable. 
But the gods chose our family to produce Pesajero's bride. And you are the only biological daughter of this family. So that is about the drama of the gods in this whole affair. So my dear, you just have to relax. Hmm? You just have to relax. Yeah. Huh? Just yesterday, the gods pronounced a maiden for my father's family as a chosen bride to the heir apparent to this kingdom. Curiously refusing to mention me by name, the only daughter of my father's family. They rather dramatized the entire process in a manner that humiliated me before everyone in the palace. And today, the gods descends their prince to my father's compound to fire Kanu, that signifies the birth of a first daughter, or the first time a first daughter will be arriving in the soil of Ujeko kingdom. And few hours later, the prince, to which I am to be his bride, aborted a sojourn that is central to his ascendant to the throne, and returned on with a strange young woman of marriageable age. Tell me, ma'am. Isn't that enough to get me worried? Njideka, don't let the coincidences cry as they appear worry you so much. As the next king of Ichiku Kingdom, Prince Ajelo is forbidden from marrying any maiden that is not from this kingdom unless he will lose the throne. As we all know, the young lady in question is not from Ichiku Kingdom. But if she is by any chance an indigent, she is not a daughter of this family. So she cannot and will never be a threat or rival to you. Mom, yes, dear. If by some chances, she could be a daughter of this kingdom. Is it not also possible by some wild chance that she could be a daughter of my father's family? Are you implying that your father could be lying to us? Just wondering. Tell me, Mom. Do you still believe that we should do nothing on our part? Solely believing on the wisdom of the non dramatizing gods? Jideka, I must say that the gods are wise and benevolent, even when they are dramatizing. 
The gods are wise. I will see. The drama that a cause has displayed in this bride issue so far. There is only one that has a face. The stranger that Prince Ajari returned with from the jungle. Tell me, Mom, do you still believe that she poses no threat to me be the next queen of this kingdom? You like it? Go on, you're not eating like you like it. Your clothes look so good on you. Thanks. You're welcome. Except for the difference in facial looks. Physiologically, you look every inch like her. Who? Oh. My mother. Really? Where is she? She's no more. Yeah. She was the queen's chief maid and the most senior palace maiden back then. She and the queen died hours apart. What? How? Why? Food poisoning. Yes. She died of food poisoning by the second most senior palace maid who was envious of her closeness to the queen. You see, my mother was so close to her majesty that she allowed her lots of privileges, including sharing from her plates of food sometimes. So on that fateful day, they both shared the food that was meant for my mother and died a few hours afterwards. Oh dear. This must be very devastating for you and your highnesses. It was and still is. I miss my mother and her majesty so much. I miss them so much. So 
So, um, after the execution of the culprits, His Majesty drove away every other female palace staff except me. My mother was a widow. And I am her only child. So, His Majesty allowed me to stay here on a compassionate ground. He's a good man. Yes, he is. And a very capable king at that. You see, the prince took after him squarely on being compassionate. On that note, I agree with you. Only a capable and empathetic man would do all that he has done for me. Ever since he encountered me in the jungle. But oh, please, tell me the truth. Am I safe here? Yes. You are very safe. In fact, very, very safe. See, once you have the support of His Majesty and the Prince to stay in this palace and kingdom, I promise you, no one, no one dares hurt you. You see, it is believed that His Majesty and the heir apparent to the throne are properties of the gods. And so the gods guard them jealously, including everyone under their care. So you are safe. I should be happy about this, but I'm not. Come here. You're not happy. Why? I cannot remember myself. My family, my community, how I even ended up in the jungle. No more. I cannot even remember my name. Which human being will be happy with such? No more, tell me. I understand. Patience and time take care of every situation. Those were the words of my late mother, and I believe her so much. So I advise you allow time to take care of your situation. On my part, I will do everything within my power to take care of you as long as you're in this palace. I want to take you like the sister I never had. Yes, and I want you to take me as such. Hmm? See? I want to wear that this done with you. Okay? Hello. You are the one whose help I sought and used to get my husband to marry me. Even when I was with his baby. He bluntly refused to discuss marriage with me. And when I found out that even after you helped me to spiritually engineer his wife, his first wife to get to divorce him, finally paving way for our marriage, he was so deeply in love with her to the extent that he secretly planned to divorce me after I deliver of my baby and return to her. Jello, you, you helped me to spiritually engineer the situation that claimed the life of his wife in America. Have you forgotten that it was you also, Jello, who helped me to get my husband to agree to keep his sons who were mere boys when their mother died? with one of their relatives back in America so that my daughter and I can have his attention all to ourselves. So why are you telling me that you can't help me in this situation? Why? How, Jello? How? I want to know. Whatever word 
I say in this chamber is the word of the spirits. Dr. Udala, the spirits said they cannot help you on this one, not me. But at least you can tell me who this girl is. Who is she? Where is she from? Who are her parents? What's her mission in Egypt Kingdom? Just talk to me. Tell me all you know about her. I don't know. The spirits are not telling me. Jello, this is no longer... She is a child of destiny. Her destiny led her into the jungle and brought her into contact with Prince Ajero. Only the spirits knew what happened and they are not telling me. Why are they not telling me? They are not telling me too. Please, is her presence in each eco kingdom going to affect my daughter's chances of becoming Prince Ajiru's wife in any way? As far as she is alive in each eco kingdom, she will be your nemesis. What? She will be your daughter's nemesis too, Dr. Udala. Is this girl? What does she want? I need to know. I don't know. Only the spirits knew, and they are not telling me. Neither would they tell any human till Obaje, the chief god of Ichiko Kingdom, permits them. Then she has to die. If you or anyone working for you harms her while she is within Ichiku territory, Ubaji will strike you and Ijideka dead. No! Instantly. No! Chalo, no! If you want her dead, find a way to convince her to leave Ichiku territory. Once she is outside, you can kill her outside the kingdom. How in God's name am I going to convince her? How do I get her to convince her to leave Ichiku Kingdom without the prince or his majesty intervene? You are the one who said you want her dead. Figure out a way to do it on your own. The spirits said they will never be a part of it in any manner. Neither will I or they will kill me. Dr. Udala, I am done with you. God's name is this happening now. Not after everything I plotted and executed to make sure that I entered my husband's family. Why is this happening now? Why?
One more question, and I must say that on the surface, it might sound professionally unrelated in your field as a medical doctor. But critically viewed, it is not. And the question is, are you a perfectionist? Hmm? You heard him. Your answers, please. Um, I'm a firm believer that in life generally, and in the medical profession in particular, no one person knows it all. Two or more heads are always better than one. So why imperfection in the form of procedural or prescription mistake could be life or death issue for a doctor's patients? The team delivers better results than individual doctor. Second or even third opinions cannot be overlooked in many cases. To that extent, professionally, sir, I am not a perfectionist. I am a team player. And in life, generally. Still, I am a team player. Your son here, Dr. Mecca, was my mate in medical school. He can bear me witness to that. Dr. Mecca, please. I'm a member of the panel interviewing you, Dr. Dalla. You're right. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, that concludes the interview. Um, please, you can excuse us, Dr. Dalla. Okay, sir. Great questions. Um, once again, Unacheze and um, Emeka. That. Yes, that. I must confess, you guys have made me proud of my decision of making you managing director and assistant medical director here. Honestly, having said that, um, what do you think about her? I mean, her performance in the interview. Well, uh, from my point of view, as a professional business administrator, I say excellent. Especially her answer to the last question, bordering on being or not being a perfectionist. America. I totally agree with Tonachese's view that medically she was spot on with her answers. The team is better than the individual. Second opinions are absolute necessity in certain situations. And you, Dad, what do you think? Uh, thank you for recommending her. So, does it mean she has a job? Yes, um, unless you have, you're having a change of mind of recommending her. No, Dad. Go and call her then. All right, Dad. <laughs> I can see that. Please, what did your dad and your brother say? Did they say I'm not good enough for the job? You know, aside from the despicable things you did back in campus, trying to seduce me, I have nothing against you, Dada. Come on, Emeka. Have I not apologized enough for all that? I'm sorry, please. You promised me there will never be a repetition of that, either with me or with any member of my family, if I help you get employed in my family hospital. This is a highly regarded private hospital in this city and beyond. And you know that, Odala. This reputation was built by my father by insisting on high ethical and the moral standards for the staff over the years. Please, Odala, if there's any Apology that I will appreciate is just for you to keep to that promise as long as you work here. For as long as I work here? Do you, do you mean that I passed the interview? 
Your performance during the interview was very impressive. I must confess. I'm very proud of you. As for the job, you got it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anaka. You wouldn't know what this means to me. Working in a hospital like this has always been my professional dream. Thank you for making it happen. Thank you. Thank Ethel more. She's the one who insisted that I recommend you. Oh, thank you so much, my dear friend Ethel. You won in a million, friend. Thank you. But then, you deserve all the thanks for being such a gentleman. For keeping all my shameful attendance, seducing you from her. And saving my relationship with her too. Thank you. God bless you. It's all right. My father and my brother are waiting in the office. Shall we? Sure. Then the gods of our forefathers, your majesty. <laughs> Hearty congratulations. Me to you and the entire royal family. Of course, yes. <laughs> yes, I understand <laughs> what is required of me as the current enabled of Ichigo Kingdom and the oldest male member of the uh, Oglisi family. Yes, of course. I will do the need for your royal majesty. Yes, I must do the need for. Once again, congratulations to your majesty. And may your reign be long. <laughs> what a great news. What a good news. What a joyous way to change my schedule for the day. Mm. Moment to change my schedule for the day. Thanks. Dada. I apologize for the slight late start to today's daily management meeting. It was my fault. I had flat tire on my way coming to the office. That's no problem. Um some great developments back in each ago. As we were already overtaking the meeting, though. Great development in Chiku. Yes, sir. I just got off the phone with the royal family, the royal majesty. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they the 18th of the Chiku kingdom. His way has just been delivered of. The baby boy. Oh, wow. beautiful. <laughs> First child. That's nice. And he only has his egg to the ancient truth. Uh, 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 so, the God has not said so. <laughs> only the God has, uh, has the right to say so. I don't get it, Dad. Um, in Ichiko Kingdom, only the gods have the right to choose a male child that will replace his father, the king. And they do not always follow the order of seniority in making such sorts. When a child is born to a king in each of the kingdom, within 24 hours, a ritual must be conducted to ascertain if he is the heir to the throne or not. And such a ritual must continue if the first son is rejected until we we'll have a heir apparent to the throne. Mm -hmm. That is in Ichigo Kingdom. And as the current enable of Ichigo Kingdom and the oldest male member of Oblis clan I have a central role to play this time. As the oldest May member of our this clan, I am heading to Ichigo to partake in that ritual right away. <laughs> That's okay, Dad. 
Since you brought to work with me in my car, I guess you'll be needing the car for the journey. I think that won't be necessary because the mechanic called, they called earlier today that uh, he's done fixing the fault in my car. Um, all you need to do is to take me up to his workshop and I'll pick my car. When? Right away. Um, if you're busy, the hospital driver can do that as well. Um, it's okay, Dad. I will drop you. Dr. Odala here will handle any emergency in my short absence. That's all right. Um, yes, I can, Dr. It's okay. I'm sorry we did this. You didn't break me, sir. We are adults. Thank you. For what, sir? For your maturity. Okay, you're welcome. Please. What we did is absolutely forbidden by my father in this facility. It must not be heard by another... I don't kiss and tell. Do you? No. 